Okay, we are here with Bob Walaszewski. Did I get it. that you right? You nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> okay, better than Bob W. That's so, right. <laughs> with Focus on the Families plugged in online, you have been with uh, Focus for a long time. Tell us a little bit about what you do and and. Kind in this organization, yes. Yeah, almost 20 years this September. And uh, many folks that are fans and have been of uh, Focus on the Family, maybe have been through Adventures in Odyssey when they were kids and raised, etc., cetera, uh, may not be aware of just how involved we are in the world of entertainment. Um, we do movies, but it's not just movies. We review movies, and uh, not just Christian movies, but basically everything that's popular, every R-rated PG-13, PGG out there, we try to cover them all, but we also do video games. Um, I have two people on my staff that not only can play them, but can play them through every single level and, uh, and let people know what's out there in the world of video games. We also listen to the top charting uh, music that's out there in the secular world. So if you're looking to, you know, my kids want to download something to their iPod. It's also television shows. Plus we have very practical content on our, on our website. Not just here's what's out there in the world, but here's what to do with it and how to to help guide your family through it. Yeah. Well, and that is such a needed thing right now because, you know, in this culture and some Christian parents out there who really want to protect their children, to be able to have a voice out there giving them input on what they're going to see when they go to see the movies. Yeah, I always say that the creator of the universe deeply cares about what we watch and what we listen to. But many of us, even in, faith, in the faith community, make our entertainment choices based on other things than what our creator might say. For instance, we'll say, well, who's starring? in that movie like like the rest of the world does or wow, how are the special effects or how did it do at the box office I heard it was number three and made 72 million I'm going well I, I kind of think there, there's there's some better things to make a decision about a movie than how it did at the box office or who's starring it all those those things are important but they're like that important when it comes to a big big you know uh, set of criteria yeah, well, you know, there, a while back, there weren't a lot of options in the area of faith-based films, and now it's really becoming a big thing. And tell us how you've seen the transition in the faith-based market. Yeah, I, I like to say that probably about seven years ago, eight years ago or so, it was like if there's a pendulum, the pendulum split down the middle, and it went swung way, way to the awful side on one side. I mean, so that you had Saw movies coming out, or you have things like The Kids Are All all right or the American or Black Swan which are just incredibly well different problems for different ones but just incredibly awful things and then at the same time the pendulum went way the other way and uh, and I think it was based primarily at the start with the passion of the Christ when Mel Gibson gave us that film 366 million dollars domestically later Hollywood went hmm we don't understand it, but apparently there's an audience for films out there that have a faith message. And, uh, and so we then had the likes of uh, Facing the Giants and Fireproof and Coming Courageous and Soul Surfer and Grace Card and, uh, and more and more and more. Somebody is sending me or giving me a phone call or sending me an email saying, I'm working on a project. It's faith-based. Would you? And, and I'm like, yay, 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 yay. And so uh, in time, it's going to get better and better and better. Better, the quality is going to get better. The act, it's all, we've already seen that part of the pendulum swinging, but uh, I know as more money gets in involved as well, it'll even get better. So I'm really excited about that trend. Th this trend, not that trend. Yeah. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so I, I know quality is probably one of the biggest issues in faith-based films. Now, I know a lot of filmmakers are really trying to focus on being real. And so because of that, they are making some compromises with, with moral standards. What do you think about um, the trend that is going on in, in a moral direction with faith-based films? Well, I, I know... I know the the argument, you know, if we're going to show it the way it really is, it's got to be gritty. And if we're going to show, you know, let's say an urban scene, whatever, you know, the people are going to be, they're going to be cussing up a blue streak and whatever. But I have, I, 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 maybe I'm just tend toward a little bit more of a conservative bent, but I think that for years, I mean, production code years, you know, Hollywood could figure out how to make a film without, um, without being, 
problematic. So that if you're going to show someone that say, let's let's take it, let's say there is a, a story you're telling and it involves a rape. Well, some Hollywood things you you have to basically show that scene, whatever. And I think you can show dialogue of two people talking later in the movie where she's devastated and and, and says verbally, here's what happened to me, and not even that explicitly. And and viewers get okay, I understand. She was sexually assaulted. That's why she's crying in that scene, rather than show it. So I so I think even Christian filmmakers have to still be very careful to say, tell a great story, show a very redemptive message, but don't trip up. Don't be a stumbling block to your viewers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, very good. Well, I thank you so much for being with thank us. You, we really appreciate that and appreciate what you do. It's a great privilege. Okay.